Never bully your insurance company, or you lose your franchise. Hello all. Excuse any poor grammar or spelling. I'm on mobile. TLDR at bottom. Edit. Nobody has permission to share this story on other platforms I have already seen this shared. Without permission. So please do not share it. This story comes from a friend of mine. Sarah. And has been building for almost five years until it all came crashing down over the last week. A few things to note before I get into it. Sarah works at an insurance company. Dealing with a massive nationwide delivery company. Her company insures all the delivery trucks. Over the years, Sarah had seen her fair share of anger from callers. Mostly justified. Or people letting off steam at the anonymous voice on the other end of the phone. She's learned not to take it personal. She absolutely despises the owner of one particular franchise depot, Dick. On to the story. We start in 2016. Dick is the franchisee of a vehicle depot for delivery company. Meaning he's sort of an owner. But the company CEO could take away his ownership if they feel like it. I'm not sure exactly how this works. But as far as I understand it's a fairly standard franchise contract. So anyone who knows about these things should have a rough idea of what Dick has to do. Dick calls in for the first time. To talk to Sarah about a claim one of his drivers is making. Something simple. Reversed into a wall. Minimal damage. But claiming to get the vehicle repaired. Dick starts ranting and screaming about how dare he, his driver be expected to pay in excess. Standard. Sarah has dealt with people like this all her career. So she just deals with it as she always does. And so it continues for two years. With Dick bullying and abusing any call handler when he calls about a claim. It's annoying. And plenty of people have been brought to tears by it. But they can't stop serving him because he is responsible for dealing with his franchise's claims. It's now 2018. And Dick decides to get himself arrested. To give you an idea of just how stupid this man is. One of his drivers had been in a really bad accident. Nobody was seriously hurt. But the van was badly damaged. So while it was being repaired. Sarah organized for a hire van. Dick goes to the hire company to collect the van. And he's asked to make a one pound payment by debit credit card to secure the vehicle. I'm pretty sure it's so the hire company can just charge it for any damage caused while on hire. And as an industry standard in my country. Dick doesn't like this. He argues with the hire company. He threatens to dump the hire vehicle once he's finished with it. Finally. He punches the poor bloke working front desk. As previously stated, Dick gets arrested. Fast forward to a few months ago. Everyone is working from home. Yay. Lockdown. And most people understand this. Everyone except Dick. He must be having a particularly bad day. Because his tantrum about how useless Sarah and her company is descends into personal insults. Sarah, having an equally bad day decides that now is the moment she will get revenge on this guy for everything he has put every claim handler through. So she requests a copy of the recording of the call. All calls recorded for safety. Complaints and calling people out on their bullshit. She then sends this recording to three people. 1. Her manager. Saying she refuses to speak to Dick due to his abusive behavior. The rest of the team agree. And suddenly there is not a single claims handler willing to speak to this man. Manager says he will sort something. 2. Dick's boss. Simply stating that his behavior is unacceptable. And the next time he tries to speak to someone at insurance company that way. They will end the call. 3. Every listed CEO or board member of Dick's company. She wanted all of them to know just how vile this man was. Then. Today. She gets the call she's been waiting for. 
A representative of delivery company has called, wanting to apologize for everything Dick put her and her team through. He also gives the best news. Dick has been downgraded from franchise owner to a lowly delivery driver. His lovely pay package, benefits, annual bonus, and company-funded car, a brand new Merc, for anyone interested, have all been taken away. He now earns a little over minimum wage, 60-hour weeks to pay his bills, with his reputation in tatters. If he doesn't meet the standard for delivery drivers within the next three months, he'll be fired. Sarah also learned from someone she knows in the company that his wife is divorcing him. Because he told her she needs to get a job or they'll lose the house thanks to his sudden drop in income. Sarah hasn't yet met the new franchisee. But if I know her, she'll make it clear that she's the one who ruined Dick's life. And she isn't afraid to do it again if the new guy doesn't treat her and her colleagues with respect. Lesson. Don't be a dick to call center employees. TLDR. Dick abuses call center staff for four years. Loses big job. Nice car and wife. Edit. First. Thank you all for liking. And especially to those of you who have given rewards. Second. I want to emphasize for those who have commented on the franchise part of things, I have a very limited knowledge on how this works. As far as me and Sarah know, Dick started as an employee of this place, then got the money to buy the franchise. There's something in the contracts that allows the company to take away his franchise. And since he was formerly a driver he was given that job back on probation. Third. For the person who pointed out the description of, lowly delivery driver. I should have made this more clear. This is in no way demeaning the job these wonderful people do. It's how Dick always described the position when he called. A revenge story where the insurance company is the good guy. We start in 2016. Dick is the franchisee of a vehicle depot for delivery company. Meaning he's sort of an owner. But the company CEO could take away his ownership if they feel like it. I'm not sure exactly how this works. But as far as I understand it's a fairly standard franchise contract. So anyone who knows about these things should have a rough idea of what Dick has to do. Yup. If you don't meet the requirements of your franchise contract. Your right to operate as part of that group goes away. In theory you have the ability to continue your business. But in strong franchises, like say McDonald's, the landlord is also the franchiser. And the right to operate there in the lease is probably based on operating as a franchisee. And probably most of the things your company buys are also coming from the franchiser. So your business is kaput without them. I can kinda understand part of the attraction. Franchises sell themselves as business made easy. But in reality, you might find out you're just paying to be an employee. An employee with no minimum guaranteed salary. This gave peace to my soul. My second car accident, remembering how badly I was treated when I called my insurance company for my first accident. That happened three years prior. I was dreading the call. I was also still shaking from the accident itself. It was minor but a few millimeters more and it wouldn't have been. I am not a timid person but I was expecting an earful. The insurance woman was so understanding. Asked so many questions and I answered them all honestly. I knew hubby had upped the insurance since the first one and I knew I was covered under all the things she asked about. Every time I answered she said, that's okay. When she said she had all she needed and where to take my car to get fixed and also told that she'd take care of all with the other person's car. I had to ask, aren't you going to go off on me? She went quiet and asked, why? I told her about how I was screamed at for having an accident a few years prior and I will never.
forget her words. Sweetie. I don't know what the other person said to you but you pay for this. You pay for out services. Accidents happen and this is exactly why you pay. Hubby came home from work a few minutes later to find me bawling my eyes out. The accident. The stress of tensing up so bad from knowing I had to call my insurance company and the so. Unexpected kindness of the woman broke me for a short while. When I told hubby about her. He responded. Yeah. He wasn't gonna let them just do SHT like that so as soon as everything was done and over with with. The previous accident, he switched insurance companies. This is really good revenge. But. Lowly delivery driver. This isn't necessary. Please give some respect to these hard-working people. Without them. We won't be able to sit safely in our home while we order something online. These guys are too important and essential to be considered lowly. All the power to Sarah for finally digging her heels in. Love it. Please consider posting this in our Tales from Call Centers. They will absolutely love it. I once dated a girl who worked at a call center for some dental medical machinery company. I couldn't believe the shit she had to go through. And unlike OP's friend, she wasn't the calm collected type. She was the breakdown in tears type. Although we broke up for other reasons I hope she has found a better job suited for her. Don't be a dick to call center people or other people in the service industry. Doesn't the Data Protection Act stop people sharing things like the recordings to people outside? The insurance company? Don't be a dick to call center employees. I'm a call center employee. Being nice to us is a far better tactics than being an asshole to us if I remember correctly it. Slowed down to 256 kilobits per second at that point. Story time. This goes back a number of years before unlimited data became common. And large termination fees were around. The company I worked for did have unlimited data plans. It just slowed down after 10 GB of data usage. I was working emails one day and came across a guy that kept calling, emailing in over the same issue. And being a dick about it. His data slowing after he hit 10 gigabytes of data. From a data stick. Not a phone. No extra charges. But he didn't like being slowed down. Now this was a guy who still put in 80 to 90 GB a month of data usage. I gathered up all his emails. And the emails back from tech support and cust service reps. As well as how many times he called in about this. I took it to a supervisor and showed him the thick file. And he was surprised it was the same customer. I told him we should call this guy back up and tell him we understand he is very unhappy with us. And that we would be willing to waive the $400 termination fee. And he could go to any other provider. The thing was that with his data usage. He'd be paying thousands a month for his data. I think other providers were charging 5 cents per megabyte over their largest data plans of 5 GB. The guy backtracked very quickly and said that he was happy with our service. Supervisor said that we shouldn't hear from him. Unless it was a real issue anymore right? Guy agreed and wasn't heard from again. I felt pretty good about that win. Feels like justice to me. You know what we do to bad men dick? We punish them. Dick. You've just entered the Xander zone. Moral is. Don't be a dick. Dick. Words to live by. Brought to you by Vin Diesel. As Xander Cage in XXX. HTTPS. U2.be slash ZKJsDealRu. Wait. The wife divorcing cause she doesn't want to work? Good luck living on alimony. So dick is getting dicked. Nice. 60 hour weeks to pay his bills even this asshole shouldn't have to live like this. 
not sure what country you're in but in Australia a franchisee is someone who actually bought the right to operate a business under the parent company's name. Paraphrasing. That's why Dick is called an owner and not manager. The parent company can buy his franchise out or get him to agree to sell to someone else but they can't demote him in his own business. Nobody went from business owner to minimum wage employee without a significant payout here. Calling BS on this one. Edit spelling. Ah FedEx. I work at an insurance call center as well. Peels tell Sarah she is my hero lol. Holy shit he got wrecked. I keep hearing Xander Cage before he drives off the bridge. Moral of the story. Don't be a dick. Dick. If you enjoyed this video, please check out our playlists full of similar content. Epic Aircast is like doom scrolling for your ears. Please like, share, and subscribe.